Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomat YouTube channel. You got your boys here, Lanny Bird. The Dividend Diplomat. Get hyped. Get pumped up. We are talking to you about another dividend stock. We are taking a deep dive on a very hot stock right now, everybody. Before we do, guys, smash that subscribe button. Give Bert and I a nice thumbs up. AI, my... So here we go, guys. Another big stock right now in the tech industry. Involved heavily in AI. A little mm. semiconductor possibly here, right, yeah. Bert? AI, um, you mean AO. AO, Chico, there's that Ramon. So, yeah. guys, there's a stock here that's up over mm. 60% this year. Mm. There's a stock that's almost up 300% in the last five years. Bert, there's a stock that we talked about on Saturday. Catch that video mm -hmm. if you haven't already. One of seven dividend increases last week. That stock increased that dividend. They did. Over 14%. Man. Hmm. Who are we talking hmm. about? Broadcom, ticker symbol, A-V-G-O. We all have different plays. A yo. AO, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That AO chip right there, the Razor Ramon chip. If anyone hasn't licensed that, you might want to call it TKO and see if you can get you know get them in on this. Because I think Razor Ramon would make a great figurehead. For great you. figurehead, guys. Yeah. RIP. But let's go to Broad. Yeah. All right. Tom. So let's talk through them. You obviously it's, you you said it right there, Lanny. Fourteen point one percent dividend increase was announced in their earnings release. That's really what's going on here at the company because what happened in their earnings, revenue was up 5%. They beat the expectations. EBITDA was $5.8 billion, beat expectations. Revenue guidance was up 4%. So, I mean, honestly, it was just a phenomenal quarter when you go through the earnings release from there. But what also happened was I teased the one line about the guidance, but then they just blew their guidance out of the water with what they increased and what they were expecting from management. They said they're expecting 50 billion in revenue for 2024 and analysts were only expecting 39.17 um, billion of revenue. So I'm reading in the article. So if that's the case, they just announced that they're just going to crush the revenue out of the water. And that's what was so fascinating here about Broadcom. You know, but they do say, you know, there might be, you know, revenue in the mid to high single digits um, because of the headwinds in the semiconductor division, guys. So, yeah. and tells like, why? <laughs> yeah, don't throw us out too. But in all seriousness, I mean, we read some of the stuff, you read what's going on. They're obviously a major player in AI right now, and that's really what's propelling the company. So many stocks, AI seems to be the new buzzword. You know how you had what, you're like fit. FinTech a few years ago, you had everything, um, just slap AI on it and the valuation jumps through. Yeah. That's what's going on right now. And that's what's I, happening. I wonder if Alan Iverson is getting the bump as well. <laughs> yeah, that'd be another great one. Would, okay. No, I still think Razor would be better than AI for AI. Um, <laughs> Razor, Razor. <remote. laughs> all right. But in all seriousness, it looks like this was all built into the expectations because the stock is up 66% over year to date. So typically when you have expectations jump that much after in an earnings release, you would expect the stock to pop up 20%, but it clearly was built into the price because it's already up such a significant amount so far in 2023. Oh, it's true. It's damn true, guys. And we're going to run them through the DD stock screener focused on that price to earnings ratio less than the S&P 500, that dividend payout ratio less than 60%, hopefully. That dividend growth rate, we're going to look at the history of growing dividends and the rate that they grow them at and the dividend yield, guys. So grab your chair, grab the beer, grab that Bud Light Burt sipping on back there, grab your Steve Weiser, because these stock prices and these earnings expectations are going to be a little bit lofty here. Yes, they are. Their price is a is a cool $922.26 as of December. Yeah, Burt just bought 100 shares. He just did a, you know, a cash secure put and it got <laughs> called that. Yes, earnings per share is 45.14. Gives you a PE ratio of 20.4. So it is below the S&P 500. It's undervalued compared to the S&P 500. Yeah, threw $5 at it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, they, they, they had you buy fractional shares at, uh, on SoFi. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah. Um, after the increase of to the dividend, five twenty five per share per quarter, twenty one dollars in dividends per share per year. So dumb, but their payout ratio is what forty six percent. So it's right in the middle of our perfect payout. Perfect, rate. it's perfect, Beautiful. guys. Beautiful. Their five, five year dividend yeah. growth rate is twenty one point three two percent. So even though they only increased the dividend fourteen percent, it was below average. They still have a very strong record of crushing dividend increases, and they've done it now for thirteen consecutive years after this last increase. One more year, one more year, guys. Yeah, over halfway to being a dividend aristocrat, which we all know is twenty five years. In case you didn't know, um, now that dividend yield is two point two eight percent still, surprisingly. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what, when you look at the metrics for Broadcom, it so jumps out at you. You'd expect the yield to be, what, like 0.8% or something with what the, the price is and how much it's increased. No, they've held the yield strong at 2.28%. Old. Is, yeah, as we said, it's sixty up 66% year to date, 73% over the last year, and a cool 261% over the last five years. So, been a good wow. for this, this, Yeah, this stock is on all. Firing all cylinders now. I'm sure at some point the AI bubble will burst. I don't know how many AI players you can have in the game here, but uh, wow, AVGO. Let us know first off who owns AVGO before we get into kind of the discussion part here. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm not. A tech well, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm not a tech expert, so I can't tell you is Broadcom gonna be the leader in this. That's I don't know. But I can tell you what I'm seeing with the metrics, and the metrics are saying they're not overvalued. You're not seeing an, an outright overvaluation on Broadcom, despite the run-up. They're still trading at a multiple below the S&P 500. You're not seeing like a 45 PE ratio, which would be an immediate red flag of a void. It's a bubble run-up. They're just a great company, great dividend history, strong earnings, strong revenue. They've just had a great run. Yeah, and I mean, on top of that, they did close on the VMware acquisition just a few yeah. weeks ago. So that's going to add a huge boost to the revenue engine of Broadcom. And, um, you know, the acquisition, I know, valued you know, VMware over $60 billion. So, and that was an all cash deal because Broadcom's like, we flush over here, guys. Yeah, they're just making it rain on VMware. So, what am I now, doing? It was a cash stock deal. It was a cash stock. Yeah, regardless. Um, yeah. Um, am I buying them? No. Um, but are the metrics solid? Yeah. Are they worth watching? Sure. If they drop, why not? It's not a bad company. And to our point, we joked around about it, but we do mean it. If you want to buy Broadcom, you don't have to buy one share at $922. You can buy them in fractional chunks too. That's the beauty. You of want to buy Broadcom, years. just go back a few years ago and buy them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's exactly right. All right. So, Lanny, what are you thinking? Anything, anything different? Honestly, their historical yield the last five years is about 284. Ugh. It's, it's hard. They're, it, not, they're not the cheapest stock. I will say that. 20.4 yeah. is not the cheapest stock. Yeah, if they drop to maybe 800 per share instead of 922. <laughs> but no, no seriousness, I'll watch them. If they, they have a sudden drop, it might be worth considering buying. But I also own Qualcomm, Texas Instruments, Intel. Ugh. Um, I, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, you're just hoping LeBron gets hurt so you can get uh, get it to the top of the MVP race. Guys, what would you guys do on Broadcom? AVGO here. Metrics speak for themselves. It seems like they're going to be here to stay for a while, but do you guys think they're a little too pricey right now, or do you guys think that there's – Future higher revenue and profit growth ahead. Cash flow that'll help fuel that dividend growth. Let us know what you guys think below. If you're not already subscribed to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And remember, if you're not with us, you're against us, Jack. That was Bert, the Hurt Locker, and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats over and out.